Hi, this is James Ng, and right now when we record this, this is sort of graduation season, and so I wanted to give you some thoughts uh, around five things that I wish I knew when I was back in college or just graduating college. And so I want to start with this quote is, compare yourself to who you were yesterday. Not other people, but compare yourself to who you were yesterday. So we're going to talk about the five things I wish I knew when I was at University of Texas at Austin. Um, number one is start something that builds skills and our relationships. So this can be an organization, a business, a conference, a blog, a channel, a meetup. Um, and when you do that, you will build skills and relationships, whether that's you know how to launch something, how to connect with other people, how to um, work with different people outside of your organization. Um, all those skills are things that you will need going forward. And when you do this, make sure there is a trail of work behind it because essentially now you are your own media company. There is nobody that you have to go to to ask to publish anything. And so when somebody Googles your name, what is what shows up on page one of Google, right? And how do you control that narrative when somebody um, looks up your name? And I mean, I would build something, you know, a lot of people do things that are, um, you know, look good on a resume or look good for um, potentially getting into college or potentially um, finding a job. But I would think about items that you are already passionate about, things that you are already in a state of flow and that give you um, something that essentially you would do if you weren't paid for it, if you weren't doing if you didn't have to do it for anything it's just for pure enjoyment um find that thing start that thing number two one year from now you will be the same person you are today except the books you read the people you meet the podcast you listen to and youtube channels you follow right so seth godin's of the world the robert kiyosaki's the tim ferris dan sullivan's naval ravikant gary v howard marks all those people are people that i haven't met any of those people right but I've read their books, I've listened to their podcasts, I follow their YouTube channels, right? And so I think um, that has accelerated just the learning, the lifelong learning that has to be a part of your mindset. And in terms of the top five, you know, when I think you're in school and the top five people that you are surrounded by, um, you know, your, your GPA, if you average the top five people, your GPA is probably right around their average. Right. And then when you leave school, your um, income, your net worth is pretty close to the average of the top five people that you hang around with. And so how are you accelerating that? How are you, um, you know, connecting with people above and below you? And, um, you know, I think, you know, in the past, you know, 12 to 18 months, I've been part of a mastermind. And I think um, learning with other people in a set format, whether it's weekly or monthly, um, is a very powerful tool. And that's something you should think about. And if you are part of one, um, think about starting in, if you are part of one, great. But if you don't or are not in one, um, think about just starting one and um, connecting with other like-minded people. Number three, serve more people by productizing yourself using specific knowledge leverage, uniqueness, and accountability. So this comes from um, Naval Ravikant. And, you know, essentially, it's really four different things that he talks about specific knowledge. So what what are things that you know, leverage, which are things that um, can, amp, you know, amplify your message. Number three is uniqueness, um, only really you can do it. And then accountability is um, the ability uh, to put your name on the line. Right, so um, you're putting your name on the product um, before it ships. So the way I like to think about this is sort of find a niche, um, record it, um, whether that's a podcast, YouTube, video, and then be able to distribute it. Um, so essentially, you're going from, um, let's say, an employee to self-employed to a business at some point. And um, you know, when I think about serving more people, you know, when I was at GE and you know, that really, I, my, my audience, the person I was serving was essentially my manager, right? So, um, you know, that was, that was good, uh, but it really was only one to two people at any one time. 
And then when I came to Old Capital as a mortgage broker, I could serve an audience of people who are looking at um, financing deals and buying deals all throughout the nation, which was good. But then, you know, if you record a podcast or do a YouTube video, that can go to thousands of people um, all at once. And um, so I think as you, as you grow and you're able to serve more people with your knowledge, right? And then use that with technology's leverage. I think that brings a whole level, uh, a whole nother level um, that you can do. Number four, the biggest mistake in school is being well-rounded and taking tests on your own are the keys to success, right? So in school, you know, you're doing five or six different subjects. You're taking all these tests on your own. And that's the biggest uh, mistake, right? Because as soon as you leave school, uh, nobody cares that, uh, you know, they don't, they don't come to me for golf advice, right? So they are looking for, the, we reward the exceptional, right? And so when you search in Google for that one thing, um, Google is relentless because it only shows one person. It only shows one website. And so we reward the exceptional in the real world. And for you to be the best in the world, you probably have to have a team, right? You can't do it on your own. And so um, building a team around you to become the best in the world um, is something that most schools do not teach. And so um, unfortunately, that's the biggest mistake that you're going to have to learn. And hopefully you can um, do that um, as you come out into the real world. And then number five, every decision in life should move you from a laborer to a capitalist, right? So a laborer is someone on the ENS side of the quadrant per Robert Kiyosaki that sort of is working for their money. And eventually um, you are trying to transition to the BNI side, the business and the investor side. Um, either that's building assets, building businesses or buying assets as an investor. And so, um, you know, at first when you're coming out of school, I think it's really around habits, right? So there's good habits of the rich and good habits um, and bad habits of the poor that you have to um, slowly um, integrate out of your life in order to buy and build assets. And so uh, these were sort of my top five things that I wish I knew when I was at UT. And I wanted to provide some helpful items here um, along the way. So I think um, starting in the morning, um, you know, how Elrod wrote a book called Miracle Morning, and it really talked about f um, five or six things um, in the morning that you should do every morning. And so whether these are 30 seconds or an hour each, it's up to you. And so it starts sort of around silence, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and scribing. And I think if you do that every morning, it will change, um, you know, your entire day, which will translate into better months and better years. Number two is one thing. And in today's market, we are just inundated with the number of things that uh, we are told to do. And, you know, the one thing talks about, what is that one thing that you can do that will make everything easier or unnecessary? And so um, as you look at your to-do list, um, you know, really it comes around the 80-20 principle that, you know, 80% of your results are going to come from the 20% of the things that you do. And so how can you keep narrowing that down and keep asking that question until you, you focus on the most important thing that you can do that day? Number three is a thousand true fans. And so I think if um, you read about the long tail, um, it's not that everybody needs a million um, fans, a million subscribers. If you read the article by, uh, by Kevin Kelly, he talks about how a lot of people, um, they just need a thousand true fans that are part of their tribe and that will follow them. Number four is blue zones. And this was an interesting study that um, they did around you know, so what areas of the world do people live the longest, right? Just naturally. And they found some common themes around that. So natural exercise, plant-based diet, belonging to community with similar values and purpose-driven. So I thought that was an interesting book to take a look at. And then number five, five regrets of the dying. Um, and these were around not being true to themselves, working too hard, not expressing their feelings, not staying in touch with their friends and uh, not letting themselves be happy. So I think those are some helpful resources as you dig a little deeper. Um, you know, my background has been, you know, here in Texas in sort of the risk 
um, loan originations, investing timeframe. And as I sort of transition from ENS to BNI, um, that's uh, my background. And then if you like this channel, definitely subscribe, uh, like the video, join the email list. And then if you have any questions, set up some time with me um, to discuss sort of buying, selling, refinancing your next multifamily deal. And I'll leave you with this quote. Um, before you're old, attend as many funerals as you can bear and listen. Nobody talks about the departed's achievements. The only thing people will remember is what kind of person you were while you were achieving. So thanks a lot, guys.